Welcome to the new season of Be The Good With Kate, the show where guests leave you inspired to uncover your passions and discover tangible ways to make a difference along the way. Here we talk to individuals who are doing just that, individuals from all walks of life and industries. While we have featured guests from Bali to Utah, Florida to Japan, and just about everywhere in between, this season we are going uber local with my new slash old state of New Jersey. New Jersey, but why? And why should I care? Well, because your host, that's me, Kate Cherichella Tente, is a New Jersey native but longtime Manhattan resident. That is, until just a few months ago. As I rediscover my home state, I wanted to bring on some guests doing good here. But just like in prior seasons, something I love about human connection and inspiration is how you certainly don't need to be from the same place or a similar background to get so much out of hearing from a person. In fact, I think it is better that way. We notice how we as humans are so similar in so many ways and how each of us has so much power to make a difference in our own lives and the lives of others. And I hope you are inspired here to start, restart, or continue your journey of finding your passions and helping others along the way. Easy and impactful way you can help this podcast reach more people? Share with a friend or leave a review. Thank you for helping to inspire more people. Now onto this week's episode. Let's spread a little more goodness in the world. Welcome back to Be The Good With Kate. Today, I'm so happy to to introduce you to Alexandra Pato. She is a registered dietitian here in New Jersey. She has a virtual private practice. She specializes in women's health, eating disorders, and family nutrition. She lives in South Orange with her husband and three young children. I love how she said she's passionate about helping women, particularly moms, heal disordered eating and nourish their bodies and their families so they can lead more fulfilling lives. Alexandra, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks so much, Kate, for having me. Thanks. Well, as also a new mom myself, well, I say new, I guess it's been a year now, you came across my radar with a mom's group nearby. And as a personal trainer as well, I hear a lot of times people from all walks of life, male and female talking about, you know, I don't know how to eat or I'm obsessed with food or anything in between. So first of all, thank you for doing what you're doing. And please just tell everybody a little bit more about who you are and what you do in your own words. Sure. Um, Yeah. So uh, food is on everyone's brain. You know, we all eat multiple times a day. So it's something that impacts everyone's life. And my own work um, is really focused. Like you said, it's very niche. Um, And so my passion has been for a while really trying to give some focus on the mom. And part of this is from my own story of having kids and where I felt like more support was needed. Um, But I've also always had like an academic interest in maternal health and like fertility and, and prenatal postpartum, just kind of the parenting journey journey. Um, And so kind of my academic interests and my personal experience all mesh together um, into what I decided to focus my nutrition practice on. And so I created Thrive and Bloom Nutrition after I had kids and wanted to really focus on kind of that more intimate setting. Um, I started in a hospital um, and really wanted to have more of that relationship with each client and really help them make a difference in their own eating journey, heal disordered eating, really move away from dieting, nourish and like meet medical needs, kind of the whole gamut. Um, everyone's nutrition journey is so different. Um, and so having that kind of one-on-one work allows me to really cater it to the individual Um, And I just feel like in today's world, as you know, as a trainer, you hear all the time, there's so much um, negativity around nutrition. And so one of my passions is really trying to kind of flip that around and have it be more of this positive, nurturing, um, uh, an experience that's not restrictive. And we're focused more on like, what can we add in? How can we make nutrition a less stressful and more positive part of your life? And I love your resources. There's so many just on Instagram alone, nevertheless, adding in your website too. I love how you talk a lot about how we talk to our children, but then also how we talk to ourselves. And there are so many resources there for everyone, which is very generous of you um, and also so helpful to all of us. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love using um, the, the world of social media and the internet to try to give back and kind of promote that message, which is 
you know, it's gaining traction for sure. There are a lot more um, professionals who have that more inclusive and positive messaging around nutrition now, but there still is a lot of the negativity. And so just trying to add my voice to that side of things to kind of help bolster that argument. Yeah. And did you always know you wanted to be a dietitian? Like as a child, was that in your mind already? Um, no, not it kind of started in college. Um, I was always science minded and loved health. And so it was some exploration of like, okay, where am I going to go with those interests? Um, and so throughout college, kind of really leaning into my interest in food and um, also kind of experiencing and witnessing some of the struggles that uh, family members and friends had around disordered eating and, and noticing that and kind of wanting to um, have an impact in that area as well. Absolutely. And then when you did, you said it really, you were influenced by having your own children. How did you figure out that you went from that dietitian big picture role to really focusing in specifically on this subject and how you built a business around following that passion? Yeah, so I started in the clinical setting, which was more broad. Um, and so I was working with in nutrition and kind of the whole gamut. Um, and then I took some time off after I had my first daughter and had a very challenging postpartum experience myself and just kind of realized that that was a gap in a lot, a lot of areas. But I was, you know, thinking about nutrition in particular and seeing that there were more resources for pregnancy and and for, you know, a lot of different conditions, fertility, all of these other times in a woman's life. And then postpartum, kind of the message was like, just, you know, lose the baby weight or just, you know, start eating healthy again. And it was very vague, not entirely helpful and just not supportive. Uh, and so that was kind of my motivation to bring more information and more support to that particular time of life. And then it kind of just expanded to once I started working with some of these new moms, wanting to support them throughout their, you know, parenting journey, once they had older kids and um, trying to reach them earlier and in their fertility and, and pregnancy stages. So uh, that that postpartum was really my jumping point. And that's also where I decided to focus on social media, um, particularly that postpartum phase. And then in my practice, it's kind of uh, expanded a little bit more just to try to get that more all encompassing support. Yeah. That's great. I think a lot of people get scared of being too specific in stepping out as, you know, especially when you're, you're your own boss and creating your own business. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing about that example, but also, and I won't get on too much of a soapbox about it, but boy, does it drive me crazy how doctors aren't nutritionally minded most of the time. You know, obviously there are some out there, but more often than not, it is that, like you said, just, just eat healthy. Well, what does that mean? And what does that mean for different people? All the time, my own personal trainer, that's the lane. And people are always asking me, well, what should I eat? And it's like, well, that, this is a big, big gap in our education as, as just a human being for sure. So I really appreciate that you're out there trying to just do all of that encompassing of nutrition for postpartum for sure. Thank you. Yeah. What surprises you most about where you are right now? Um, in terms of just, and professionally where and work in the you, practice or, you know what I love when I've asked this type of a question before, some people answer right away, like the professional aspect. And some people right away are thinking personal and every so often someone will be like, wait, which one do you mean? Um, <laughs> so then I love to say you pick or both. We've got the time. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I guess professionally, um, what surprised me most is, I guess, the, the path that I've taken. Um, because initially, as I mentioned in my early postgraduate um, phase, I was very much thinking about like the prenatal um, time. And then when I added in postpartum, I still wasn't fully thinking about like the eating disorder and disordered eating um, part of it. And then having worked with some women and seeing how this was coming into conversation time and time again, and just wanting, I'm, I'm a, I love being a student. And so I, when I have this new potential 
problem in front of me or something that I need to be more educated on. Like, okay, I'm going to get trained in this. I'm going to pursue another class, find a mentor. And so that's kind of what I did when I found, okay, disordered eating, eating disorders, there's a bigger need. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I want to be more equipped to work with the, the people who are seeking me out to help them with that. And so um, after a couple of years into my private practice, that's what I did. I focused a lot on more of that education and training. So then I could be that more um, specialized resource that I have the knowledge in the fertility and the, the prenatal postpartum and general nutrition, but then I can also layer in the eating disorder um, phase where sometimes you, you have someone who can only do one or the other. Um, And so that wasn't something I predicted early on. um, And who knows what other, other angle may come up, but that's definitely part of my personality is just wanting to to always be learning. I love that. And you know, a question that came up and you talking about this is maybe there hasn't been any studies, but even just from your own observation, have you seen disordered eating come up like a big, an influx of it in postpartum? Have you seen it be more people who had that kind of, uh, I guess, pattern before, and then it comes back or is it really just totally situation dependent? Both of those um, patterns are uh, are occurring. Um, so for some people, it's they experience an eating disorder early in life and went through recovery, um, and then the body changes and the stressors of pregnancy and postpartum can reactivate um, some of those behaviors, and so then more um, more therapy is required and more. Um, Um, more supervision and and everything in that regard. Um, But for some, it's like a first time experience of maybe there's been dieting in the past or everything um, was perfectly normal and nothing nutrition focused had occurred. And then again, this is like a a stressful life experience, but maybe the body has never changed like this before. And there's the first time in someone's life that they are not in the ideal body per our culture. And that can sometimes precipitate a disordered eating um, behavior, disordered eating relationship with food. And so some it, we see both, um, but postpartum is a particularly vulnerable time for those body change reasons. And it's a focus of the doctors, of your family, of yourself. It's just like when body image is such a big focus in life, that is a risk factor for disordered eating. I feel like after I gave birth, I maybe heard the doctor say, just make sure you're eating. I feel like that's the only thing that I can remember regarding nutrition at all that was ever said Mm -hmm. to me. And that's like, what is, that that is a huge thing there. That's a big issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say that's, like leaving you wanting for like, what does that mean? Um, And at the same time, it's actually better than some of the phrases that other people may hear because it's It's at least a pot. Okay. Make sure you're eating versus what are, why are are you eating that? And like more critical, Mm, um, which is prevalent as well. Um, Or just do whatever you need to do to try to shrink your body or something like that, which is is out there. Um, But more, more information and more support in general. Yeah. Helpful. And, you know, talking about the, the, how the disordered eating comes up and whatnot too. I had my yearly physical today before our conversation. And she said, you know, a new study came out uh, where they're saying now that a woman's body doesn't go back to normal. I say with air quotes, because what is normal, right. But for, it can be up to seven years which is the longest I had ever heard for sure. But it also like, wow, the body goes through so many changes and society, like you said, it's starting to say these things more, but those reminders of, oh my gosh, you, it takes a long time. Yes. Yeah. For a while, it was the idea of uh, you know, after the first 12 weeks, you should be back to normal or when baby's six months old or when baby's a year is all these like arbitrary yes. milestones that are just out there in the, the general narrative. And so when you 
hit that point and you haven't reached that expectation, whether it's your baby sleeping through the night or, or your body looking a certain way, then it's always internalized into where is this self failure happening, um, which is really hard for the person. Yes. And hey, flipping back to the idea of you creating your own business and forging your own way in that regard, what advice do you have for someone who is at the starting point where they say, okay, I have an idea that I think would be great, but I'm scared it won't work. I'm scared of the next steps. Any advice for that person? Yeah. So an advice that I'm still trying to follow for myself (laughs) um, would be trying to push through the imposter syndrome, which Mm. I feel a lot. Um, And so I think it's just that that self-doubt um, the, the negative self-talk of, well, someone, or in the comparison, if someone else is doing this better or someone else already is doing something similar, like that can be very paralyzing. And I get in my own head all the time with that kind of stuff. And it's most helpful for me when I can try to tune that out, um, just focus on my own goals and trying to, okay, what's the message that I want to try to put out there? How can I be most helpful to the people I'm trying to help and kind of operate from that instead of, oh, they just did this new thing. Maybe that's what I should do in my business and trying to really focus on how to help who you're trying to help. That's so great. That that who is it that you're helping and stay focused on that. Mm-hmm. Alexandra, this has been wonderful. And I want to ask you one more question. Why do you think it's important for us to share these stories about people like you doing good out in the world and specifically New Jersey right now for this season? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I mean, I think it's encouraging to hear other people's positive stories. I think it's inspiring and helps keep keep those of us who are struggling through um, trying to create some a new business or a new idea know that we're not alone um, and that it is possible to have success and that through the setbacks, there's also a lot of learning and growth that can happen too. Um, so I think just the more we talk about all of this, the better it is um, because it can be really isolating being a, a business owner, especially if you're you know operating on your own. Um, and so sharing the stories is really helpful. Excellent. Alexandra, where can everybody find you online, contact you? And these will be in the show notes as well. Okay. So my website is thriveandbloomnutrition.com. And I'm also on Instagram at postpartum nutritionist. Um, I am a little bit on a hiatus on Instagram, but keep checking back. Maybe I'll start posting more. Well, I mean, you could spend hours on your thread or what do we call it? Thread feed, feed, right? Feed. Feed, That's what it's called (laughs) because of just the immense amount of resources there. So thank you. Thanks for what you're doing and all the best. Thanks, Kate. Love what you're doing as well. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this helpful, a five-star review, like, or comment means the world to me. And if you found insight in this episode, chances are someone else will too. Share with a friend to give them a boost today. Until next time, I'm Kate Cherichel-Atente, and this was Be the Good with Kate, Season 8.